it's been a while I got a new camera this is the Canon 80D now I've been looking at cameras for a while now I've done a lot of comparisons I've watched a lot of YouTube videos and this is the one I chose there's a lot of great cameras out right now Sony Nikon the Canon line so I'm gonna explain to you guys why I chose this over some of the other cameras in its price range this video, I'm going to show you what's inside the box when you buy it, how much it costs, and I'm going to tell you why I purchased this over some of the other cameras. Let's go! First off guys, shout out to my wife for hooking me up with the best birthday present a YouTube guy could ever ask for. I just recently had a birthday and she really hooked me up. We went over all the information that we could on the internet about cameras and DSLRs and this was the best thing that we could find. Thank you so much to my wife. So now that you've seen what's inside the box. I'm going to just talk a little bit about why I purchased this camera over some of the others. But first, let me tell you what this camera costs. And I would show you the camera, but you're looking through the camera as we speak. With a two-year warranty I purchased and some of, the, um, some of the accessories, like a bag and an extra lens and stuff like that, camera was $1,500. I know that that's very expensive, but for me, it's completely worth the money. Some of the features I was looking for were very important and pretty much a deal breaker without it. First thing I was looking for was a flip screen. The screen needed to be able to come out 
and flip around so I can see my own shot. Now this camera, along with the other cameras I was looking at, are called DSLR cameras. So there's camcorders, um, there's other types of uh, handheld cameras, um, mirrorless. So there's a lot to go over and I'm not going to get into all that in this video. For one, I'm just not knowledgeable enough yet on the camera stuff. There is a guy on YouTube that I want to give a shout out to. His channel is 83 Media Productions. This guy does amazing videos, okay? He kind of just think he just does it in his spare time. Um, he does make music and stuff like that as well. Um, and I just want to give him some love because I don't feel like his channel's getting enough, uh, enough love. Um, so go to his channel and check it out and subscribe because he's really into the video editing stuff. And he actually uh, encouraged me to buy a DSLR and he gave me a pretty good idea what to look for. So anyway, back to this camera. The flippable screen was damn near a deal breaker. If, if, if the Nikon D7500 had a flippable screen, this would be a Nikon box. It didn't have a flippable screen. Roughly the same amount of money, about you know, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars before taxes. Um, so the Sony, uh, what was it, the seven A, A seven S, I think it was called, was really great. Now it had to be great in low light situations, as you can see right now. This is a pretty crazy lighting situation. I've got small lights on either side of me. I've got a light overhead here, and then I've got a light behind the camera pointing at me as well. Everything else in the room is either red or dark. So I needed specific camera to do the kind of videos that I'm trying to do. Another deal breaker, no audio input. If it didn't have audio in, and a headphone jack for audio out, it was a deal breaker. So I needed to find, not every camera does this, a camera with a headphone jack. I wanna be able to monitor when I'm recording music and I wanna be able to hear what's going into the camera. So another feature that was very important but not a deal breaker, Wi-Fi. Yeah, this is actually the image that's recording right now. So I have control over this video from where I'm recording the video at. And I like the versatility. I like to have technology at my fingertips. I can control the lighting with Wi-Fi on the spot and I can control my video. I haven't figured out if I can zoom um, and focus and all that, but I can start and stop and I can watch stuff. I can check the feed. I can check the angles and I can watch it back to make sure that I'm getting what I want. So that was pretty important. And there's a ton of videos that go over this stuff on YouTube already. If you want me to do a YouTube video in which I show some of the functions and parameters, um, from within the camera, I can do that. I just think that there's a lot of people that are already doing really good videos on cameras and I don't want to do material that's already been done. Um, but I will for my subscribers. If you ask me to do something specific, I will go and do it. Other things I was looking for. I was looking for 4K. I found out that 4K isn't really what I want because YouTube is using 1080p. And um, if I want to get into more cinematic type videos, which wouldn't be specifically for the YouTube platform, um, then I'll invest in a camera that's meant specifically for cinematic uh, quality videos, like the Red series. Now you're talking, you know, four, five, ten thousand dollars, up to thirty thousand dollars for those cameras way out of my price range. Um, I'm still a beginner. I'm still trying to find my style and I appreciate everybody for being patient with me. 
Okay, so also, when I bought this camera, um, I purchased an extra charger and I purchased an extra battery. Um, so th this is all part of the cost of me getting started with a DSLR. I could have gotten this camera for about eleven or twelve hundred dollars, um, stripped down with without the extended warranty. Now it would have come with the manufacturer's warranty, but I got this from B and H, and I wanted to be covered as long as I could. So I went with a three-year extended warranty. I didn't care so much about the weight, so that wasn't a factor for me, how heavy it was, how big it was. I wanted a camera that came with an image stabilizing lens. Um, with this camera, I actually got two. I got an 18 millimeter by 55 millimeter, and I got a 55 millimeter by 250 millimeter lens, both stabilizer lenses, which really helps when you're moving around and you don't have a gimbal. So, a couple other things that this has for me were great options. HDMI output, so I can have an external monitor and watch what I'm doing on a bigger screen. Now, when I have this, I really don't need that. But I think to have hardwired HDMI is a really good idea. It has a remote control port, so you can start and stop wired remotely. Again, the iPad app kind of stops me from needing that, but still a cool feature. To be honest, guys, it was a shot in the dark. I've never bought a camera that was more than $150 before. All the videos I've been doing have been done on my Zoom Q2N, which I'll still continue to use from time to time because if I need multiple shots, I'll, I'll use that. But you can definitely tell the difference in the image quality. It's not even close. I figured I would try the camera out and if there was a problem with it or I wasn't happy with it, I'm going to send it back. So far, I'm extremely pleased with it. My advice is don't buy from big box stores. Don't buy from Best Buy. Don't buy from Target. Don't buy from Walmart. Go to these places. Use their facility to get an idea of what works for you. And then go online and find a good deal. But make sure you get yourself a warranty because this stuff can fail. You can have this camera for a year and a half and for $1,500, it better last a lot longer. So if you have a problem after 18 months, you need to be able to send it back and get what you need to continue what you do. I'm the type of person that's always looking for good deal over quality. There's been some changes in my life that have really changed my thinking on that. My wife. She's about quality. So that's about all I got right now, guys, for this video. I'll have plenty more to go over as I learn it. If you have any questions about anything I've talked about or you have a specific question that you think I can answer, I suggest everybody leave a comment. Tell me what kind of camera you're using. You want me to dig into it a little bit for you to explain certain things that maybe I didn't cover? I didn't cover a whole lot, I know. These are the main features I was looking for. I would be more than happy to answer your question specifically. I do like to be in touch with my subscribers. And even if you're not a subscriber and you want to hit me up, I'm usually available. I'm going to be posting another video real soon, which I've already taken 90% of the video for, which is basically me showing off this camera outside in natural light and kind of showing what you can do with it. That should be coming up real soon. I've already got most of it done. So anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching my video. I really appreciate all the support and I couldn't do it without you guys. Hit me up in my email. Hit me up on Marco. Just stay in touch. All right, guys. Later.